Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the first Cooking Connection cooking class of 2021. I am so glad that everybody um, has decided to join us today. Very excited. Um, today, we are going to do a class all about meal prep, um, which is really, really fun and some great recipes. And joining me today is obviously the wonderful Chef Scott Tompkins as one of our moderators. Aww. And because January is about resolutions and we have resolution resolution solutions going on in the store and people typically like to start January off on the right foot the healthy foot do you have a resolution this year Tompkins just have to ask um yeah but I won't know it until the end of the show Great. because you put me on the spot Great. so I'll think of it Great. by the end <laughs> mine's good posture in 2020 2021 but like I said, because people genuinely want to uh, start January off on the right foot, the healthy foot, we have invited um, Kelly Thornton, one of our registered dietitians, um, to join us today to talk a little bit about what a registered dietitian is and what a registered dietitian does for HEB and to talk a little bit about nutrition services. And also she will be here for the duration of the class to answer any specific questions people may have about some of the um, nutritional attributes of the recipes and the products. So without further ado, please welcome Kelly Thornton. Thanks for joining us. Hey everybody. Thanks Charlotte. Thanks for having me. I'm oh, super excited to be here. Same. Awesome. So tell us a little bit. So you're a regis registered dietitian here at HEB. So tell us what that means um, for our customers and what it means for HEB. Absolutely. So a registered dietitian is a certified nutrition professional. Um, in order to become a registered dietitian, you actually have to have a bachelor's degree in nutrition, and you also have to have a very competitive 1,200-hour internship that you complete, and then take a test, and then you can be a registered dietitian. Um, I wanted to um, add, too, that HEB actually has a team of 50 registered dietitians um, that actually can meet with you in select stores or online um, to talk to you and help you meet your nutrition goals for 2021. So when you say they can meet with you in store or virtually, what, what can they do? Like, what, what does that entail? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a lot of different ways that we can work with, uh, with you if you decide to uh, come and check us out. Um, we have first our one-on-one -on -one sessions. So you can come in and talk to a, a registered dietitian. Um, typically, we get to know you a little bit. And then after a couple of appointments, we usually will actually go out into the aisles with you and help you shop. So if there's a product that you really like, we can help you find a healthier product. Um, that you still like and um, you know fits your budget and your tastes. So, so let's say I came in and I didn't know where to start. What um, I didn't know what my nutrition goals were. I just knew that I wanted to start. I wanted to be a healthier me. So, where would we start? What could you? What would you talk to me about? Well, Charlotte, I think it kind of depends on what your goals are. So, some of the other things that we offer to help you get started are um, we have a, a metabolic test that you can complete where you actually. It's about 30 minutes, and it actually tells you where your metabolism is. So if you want to know how many calories do I need in a day, this test will tell you that. So once you know how many calories you need, you can decide where you want to go with that. So if you want to lose weight, we can help you set a goal for that. Or if you want to gain weight, maybe you're a bodybuilder or you know, you're just wanting to gain some weight, we can help with that too. So you would eat above your level. Um, we also have a, a body composition test. So if you want to know how much uh, fat or muscle or water you have in your body, you can take that test, you know, make some changes, and then come back and take, take another test and see where you went. So that's a really good place to get started. We also have a micronutrient testing service where you can um, actually come in and um, you know, buy a kit, test at home, and then have an appointment with one of our registered dietitians to talk about any deficiencies you might have. So those micronutrients usually are gonna be things like, uh, might be like omega-3s, you know, B12, um, you know, uh, you said earlier zinc, zinc that's right. and iron. Yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of different things we can test for in that kit, but it's a really good way to help you get started. And we're going to talk about some of those things later on yes, with some of the are. products. I'm excited because I feel like the uh, as I gather the pieces of my brain, because my head exploded on all the stuff, but I had no idea as an HEB partner that we did. So I'm sure that customers that are listening, like literally, and this is what I think what's great and speaks to what HEB is uh, all about, is the fact that we care enough about our customers to literally put People like you who are professionals, who literally have the experience, have all the stuff to, to help come alongside them. And you're not, like we talked about this, you're not slapping the food out of their hands, right. Kelly. You're <laughs> literally going, hey, I want to lose a couple pounds over the holidays versus, hey, I just found out that I, myself, my child, my husband has diabetes. 
like we need a specific diet. You guys can do all of that, which I think is amazing. And all the scientific stuff of all the, the sci-fi like tests you guys can do for body composition <laughs> is pretty insane. So I'm, I'm amazed and I'm excited you're here to talk more about it. Absolutely. Our goal with Nutrition Services is to meet you where you are. So again, whether you're a diabetic and you're struggling to figure out what to do next, or maybe you are a parent and you are struggling to with dinner because that's, let's face it, that's really challenging, especially right now. Um, you know, or if you are maybe thinking that you might want to go gluten free or you're thinking you might have an allergy, we can help you with all those things. So whatever your individual needs are, we want to meet you where you are. Carla, Carla has a shout out. Um, she said in the chat, my daughter has been seeing an HIV dietitian for a couple of years for an eating disorder. I love her. That's I awesome. love that. That's a, Thank that's you, a huge, Carla. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for sharing Carla. Yeah. That's why we show up every day. That's exactly right. it. So earlier on the break, you were telling me about um, a program that the dietitians have to work on meal planning and meal prep, right? That's right. So in kind of going in, in with the theme of what we're talking about tonight with meal prepping is meal planning. So you kind of, you have to plan before you prep, otherwise you get there and you may not have everything you need. So um, we have a service that we just launched this year um, around meal planning. So you can actually come in, uh, talk to a dietitian about what your allergies are, your likes, your preferences, budget, and we can actually help you create a meal plan that works for you. Typically when you come in, you'd come in uh, and it would be a week's worth at a time. Um, when you get the packet, it actually also comes with recipes, so it's all right there together and a shopping list. So you can go right out into the store and do your shopping. And you help that. You you can you will, guys will go along with somebody and show here's how you like get store tours. Like that's all part of the. Uh, which blows my mind. Still, still so picking up pieces. I also didn't realize that all of those recipes mm -hmm. come from our HEB.com like website. That's right. So we actually have depending on you know the level of cooking that you like to do. If you're still you know if you're just starting out, you're just learning. Maybe you only want to cook you know maybe one night a week. We can give you, you know, one recipe from .com and have some other things that are a little bit more pre-made as part of that meal plan. So we also have our Meal Simple products that are there available too that are, are really, um, you know, quick, easy things you can do if, you know, maybe you forget to meal prep. So Everybody needs a cheat every now and then. Yes, Like I, I need to cut a corner every now and then. Exactly. So, all right, well with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to Charlotte so we can get our demonstration going. Um, please feel free to put in any questions you have in the chat. Um, I'll be moderating throughout the entire session and I'll be doing my best to answer those. So thank you guys. I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah, so Kelly will be here. So any questions you have in the chat, she'll do them. I will definitely not answer them because I am not a uh, nutritionist at all. So I'm going to be uh, <laughs> just listening. And selfishly, I'm also very excited Kelly's here because I am going to uh, answer a lot of my own questions through, through her tonight. So it's great. So I'm, I had to, I'm going to make a reservation with my dietitian as well. But I'm excited to so, have her on hand to answer my questions. If you wanted questions. to make a reservation or if you wanted to make an appointment with a dietitian, where, how would you go about that? Absolutely. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to our nutrition services page, which okay. is heb.com slash nutrition services. We also have a phone number that's on that page that you can call us at. Did you hear that, Tompkins? H I heard it, com. and I, I'm, I'm going to heed the, the, the advice, but I'm also still going to take advantage of having the professional in the house with us. Wonderful. So. <laughs> okay, so to get started and to start off our meal prep, um, we are going to do three fantastic recipes, and um, fitting in that theme, again, of new year, new you, and helping people meet their nutrition goals, and just sort of helping people start off on the right foot, um, we're going to do the meal, the meal prep, and I guess um, we were talking about this earlier, guys. It's like the number one barrier is not being prepared, right? So this is all of these recipes are designed to cook once and eat twice, right? So we're going to do a wonderful spaghetti squash um, dinner. We're going to do a cauliflower fried rice, and then we're going to do a warm berry oat bowl, which is a wonderful breakfast. And um, they're very easy, chock full of um, fruits and vegetables, and some really fun products that I uh, particularly like. So we're going to start off with getting our spaghetti squash into the oven. Um, I've been calling it butternut squash all day, but this is a spaghetti squash. I do it and all the time. You do it all the time. Thank you. I feel normal now. Um, really, to, to, I've got my oven preheated to 400. Really easy to do. You, you want a sharp knife. A sharper knife um, is safer, so more people cut their fingers on dull knives than they do on um, sharp knives. Because you're trying to hack through something. <laughs> okay, so now I'm really nervous. Now I'm like nervous that I'm going to cut myself, but we're totally fine. So I'm going to cut off the stem end of this guy. And I, I will definitely say while you're cutting it, um, yes. spaghetti squash and acorn squash are two of the tougher squashes. Right. Like butternut's a little 
can be a little softer. Delicata, obviously, a little softer, but they're it. a little more. So you just got to use safety, like she said. Yep. So a sharp knife. So then um, cut off the top and the tail, the, the top and the tail, right? And then flip it over, and then I just go straight down, right? Like this. Well, oh, please don't cut myself. Please don't cut myself. <laughs> Ruin all my credibility. Fantastic. All right. And then it just comes right apart. And then I use my favorite tool in the kitchen. I'm going to run right over here real quick, which is the ice cream scoop. And I just scoop out the seeds like this. And Scott says he actually roasted with the seeds. You roasted with the seeds in it? I do, because you know why, Charlotte? Uh, it's, yeah. it's called a laziness technique. That's okay. called, uh, you just olive oil, salt and pepper it, and then you roast it, because they're so fibrous. Okay. And like, I just, that way when you're done, I just scoop it out with a spoon a little easier. Okay. But I like the, uh, I learned a trick. I'm going to use my favorite ice cream scoop as a cedar. Cedar, I'm, I use it for watermelon and cantaloupes, everything. I love it. I, I, Great idea. Ice cream scoop, one of my favorites. All right, very easy. Just take that stuff out. And scoop Kelly, it. ice cream is okay, right? We're not, so, we're, so it's like, it's, but it's everything in moderation, right? So like we're gonna have, so like the first year, new you, new you, or new year, new you, you can still have the ice cream, but it's all about the moderation. We talk about foods, right? Is that right. part of the, part of the, the all thing foods as well? fit. That's right. And it's all about looking at that, that serving size on the back and, you know, taking a look at that, especially for those higher fat foods like, you know, ice cream that are a little more indulgent, but also delicious. So the gallon Ooh, is not indulgent. the serving size, right? The gallon That's is right. not, yeah. is not a one gallon, serving. Don't want to eat the oh. half gallon. <laughs> making sure. Um, Brian had a question. Okay, Brian. And Brian, this is a uh, great question. Do I, I have a question about oils. I predominantly use olive oil, but I have seen avocado grapeseed oils. How do I, how do those fit into a nutritional profile? It's a great Absolutely. question. So um, avocado and grapeseed oils are both great options when you're cooking with oils or even doing salad dressings. Um, they are both high in your unsaturated or like your healthy fats. So really what you're looking at with the difference there is a lot of flavor profile. So it's, you know, I would encourage you to try it and see, um, you know, if there's one of those in particular that you really like, and then, you know, go for that. Love it. All right, Brian, if that answers your question, great let question. us know if you have any other questions. Great question. So I love extra virgin and grapeseed. I cook, I cook with it all the time. It's really, I saute in it. I do everything with olive oil. So I've got my butternut squash halved. I put it into a shallow baking dish. I've got some olive oil. I've got salt, pepper, and then rosemary. And I, I don't like to cut up the rosemary. I think throughout the cooking, um, these cooking classes, I talk about that. It's a little woody for me. And so um, I just throw it on top and the, the oils, the volatile compounds sort of like. Volatile compounds. That sounds right? fancy. That sounds word. fancy. Uh, are released during the cooking process from the heat and then they just sort of like flavor and season. So uh, I'm going to throw this guy into a 400 degree oven, right? And it's going to be about 40, 45 minutes um, depending on your oven and the size of the squash. So while that is doing a thing, we are going to start on our cauliflower fried rice. Um, do you get a lot, Kelly, you get a lot of questions about using cauliflower and res, as substitutions in recipes? Absolutely. I think a lot of people have heard, you know, may have heard something about it and they are thinking about trying like a lower carb option. Um, so it's a really good opportunity to, you know, decrease your carbs if that's something that you're looking to do, you know. Um, and then additionally, if you've got picky eaters, it could be a really good way to sneak in those veggies. Um, so that's another really yes. great opportunity for cauliflower rice. I think one of the coolest things I learned about cauliflower rice this last year was that uh, it's very sustainable because the cauliflower rice comes from the stems that they're trimming off when they make all those florets and stuff. There's a lot of edible trim, I would say, that comes off those. Okay. And, they, and so like they blitz those up and make the rice out of them, which I, I think love is it. Really, really cool. Same thing with broccoli. Like they make those, all the broccoli stems, they would just throw out or, you know, give as animal feed. Right. So now they use it in like slaws and whatever. These are Because yeah, they're real tough and they're real, real right? good. Okay, so um, you can obviously make cauliflower, rice your own cauliflower by taking a head of cauliflower and like chopping it up. You can use a food processor, you could chop it up by hand, but again, we talked about making, making this approachable for everyone and everybody needs uh, to cut some corners. And I'm just using cullivits, like straight up, it's prepackaged, um, they've done all the hard work for you and it comes just like this, sautés really quickly. I've also got um, a diced, fresh cut, diced white onion. This um, my favorite things that you got in your hands great. there. Yeah. I, I love this, right? So like, you don't need to buy a bag of onions. You totally can, and we could chop an onion, but I just thought this was really, this was really easy, and it's, again, like, helping grease the wheels of all of this, this cooking, right? Um, I'm a big fan of this. And then I also have some diced green onion, right? So again, just sort of convenience, uh, value added products, which I'm a huge fan of. I've also got some um, shredded carrot right here. 
And then I've got some green peas. You can use frozen green peas, really an inexpensive product. You could also use um, the fresh peas that we have in produce, but green peas are already kind of cooked and they're super easy. And I just put them in a big core container and then shake them out as I need them. There you go. Um, let's see. All right, so I'm gonna move over here to my, um, to the stove. I'm gonna bring all of this stuff over there. So y'all come with me. Your mees. My mees. So if you haven't, like Cheryl was talking about, if you have not been into your local HEB and just peruse some of the, uh, the produce department to see all the fantastic value-added yeah. veg that's literally ready to go. And I know Kelly, as far as you guys, you talk about meal prep, it's like one of the best things to like, if you need, you know you need, you don't have to buy a whole onion if you don't want to be like, ah, oh, this adds labor to it. Like literally you can go, I just need about a half a cup. I can go in and get it or a whole cup or whatever it is. Yeah, pre-chopped foods are some of my favorite things when you're meal prepping because it's just so much faster. I think a lot of the time that you spend cooking, a lot of times comes from chopping vegetables. So if you can, you know, cut corners on that and, you know, buy it pre-chopped, then absolutely go for it if it's going to save you time. And you made an excellent point earlier that you're not crying when you're cutting the onions. That's true, already you're not crying. All right, so I'm adding some olive oil to a nonstick skillet, and we're gonna keat this on like medium high. More on the high side. Hernan, that's a great question. It says, I see a box by the flax seeds. Is that a recipe book? No, that is our kitchen and table plastic storage container. It looks like a cookbook because it's so well designed, but it actually is, uh, that's the plastic storage container from our kitchen and table. They're really, really cool. I know Charlotte, uh, and Kelly are going to talk a little bit more about that uh, coming up. So good eye, Hernan. I think that part of um, the of meal prepping is is investing in some like solid storage containers, right? So you're not, um, you know, searching around for like the Tupperware that's missing the lid, you know. And these are nice and concise, and they all fit together. Big fan. All right, so I'm going to keep my oil up. You can always tell when your oil is good and hot because it sort of moves around the pan more fluidly. Chef, what kind of oil are you using today? I'm using olive oil. I like it. I use olive oil for everything. You could totally use sesame oil if you wanted. Um, I would use sesame oil actually for dressing, but you can use canola oil if you like, or flavor. the grapeseed, the avocado, but I, I'm an olive oil person. I am too. You can't really, I mean, it's just good. It's a good oil. All right, so we're gonna add in the cauliflower to this. I'm gonna spill some on the floor. That's to spill, spill a little some more. <laughs> some for the pain. You better throw some over your shoulder. Right. Isn't that bad luck to spill cauliflower rice? Ooh, look. All right, and we're just gonna cook this. I'm gonna use, um, we don't wanna like, we don't wanna like cook it till it's mush, but we definitely wanna give it some color and cook it till it's like, can I say al dente with um, al dente with, tooth, with vegetables? To the tooth. Can we say that with vegetables? I think we've like, I think had this I conversation. I use it all the time. Absolutely, al dente, like just kind of cooked. Yeah. So this brought me back. So we were talking about this earlier as you're sautéing that. You talk about al dente. I asked the question to Kelly earlier because you know she's here and I had a lot of questions for her. So uh, is it more healthy to have like the raw vegetable, which is for me that's my belief, is I feel like you have to eat raw vegetables or fruits to get the full nutritional impact. But is that is that just food myth or is that like, or is it like versus like sauteing or steaming or boiling vegetables? Like, is it, you, yeah. had, you had a good response, I thought. Now, so my philosophy on vegetables is that any way you can eat them is good. Um, generally speaking, if you like them better cooked, then eat them cooked. If you like them better raw, then eat them raw. It's, I, I think any vegetable, eating any vegetable is better than eating no vegetables. So I will say, Having said that too, one thing to consider if you're boiling your vegetables is that you do tend to lose some of those vitamins and minerals into the water. So if you can do something with the water afterwards, maybe use it to, you know, if you end up making rice or something along those lines, you're gonna retain some of those minerals better. But I mean, if it's between not eating them and boiling them, then definitely boil them. I like that. So our cauliflower is cooked. Um, it's starting to brown a little bit on the side. So I'm gonna add in the chopped onion. It's about half a cup. I'm gonna add in about half a cup of the green peas, the shredded carrot. And if you're like super in, like wanna get creative with this, like you could totally use like pineapple or bamboo shoots yeah. or add mushrooms, right? Those little baby corn in the cans that are like oh, yeah. so great. I really, I really love this recipe because it's really, um, it's a versatile recipe. You can add lots of different things yeah. to go with it. All right, so I'm just gonna keep stirring this and the reason why, like, in like you're doing any sort of stir fry or fried rice type scenario, 
all of the like vegetables you want to be about the same size so everything cooks at about the same the same speed it's a good one so the recipe is up on the screen you can see that cauliflower fried rice all the stuff as she's sauteing the uh i love that i wish you guys could smell it because it actually smells really really good i'm starving because all i've had is about a half a cup of hemp seeds from uh the recipe so i can't believe you just ate a cup of <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna add in these diced um, green onions now. And then I'm gonna use, in this recipe, I'm gonna use a low sodium soy sauce. I've added into that recipe, you could use Bragg's liquid aminos or even coconut aminos. Um, what's your take on those items? So really it just depends on what your taste is and kind of what you're going for. So some things about to know about like the difference between liquid aminos and soy sauce is that with the liquid aminos, that is just a mix of amino acids, and they have a very strong umami flavor without as much salt. So they still have a good amount of salt, but not as much as most soy sauces. Um, the other thing to know about liquid aminos is that they are naturally gluten-free. So some soy sauces are actually contain trace amounts of wheat, unless they're otherwise marked as gluten-free. So if, you get, if you're buying uh, amino acids, you know that they are going to be gluten-free consistently. I will say there is a price difference. So typically your soy sauce is gonna be the cheaper option out of the two. I wish that I could hear all of that and I totally <laughs> couldn't because of the sizzle that is happening in this pan. It sounds so good though. It, it, it smells really good. You looked like, I was like, yes. Yeah. Yes. From like a straight food nerd perspective, what I love about Coco Minos, so I use Coco Minos, as, uh, it's hard to find sometimes sweet soy sauce. And so I use it as my sweet soy sauce because it's, okay. it's, it's from the fermented sap of the coconut palm. So it has a little sweeter taste to it all right all the dietitian stuff you guys said is fantastic but i just like i know from a food perspective i like to use it as this i don't know that it's good, i'm assuming it's got coconut see that's one of those food myths kelly i go oh it's got coconut it's got to be like somewhat good for you right all right i'm gonna do a really quick cleanup before i add in the egg this is my the ne this next part is my favorite part is adding the egg to a fried rice and so i've seen a lot of trick. people do it a lot of different ways um, what I do is I like to crack the egg in the pan itself. Um, I've seen people take out the cauliflower and, um, or take out the rice or cook the egg ahead of time, but I'm like a one pan kind of person. I think right? this is genius, by the way. It's a great, it's a great trick because that way, yeah, just, why would you want to evacuate everything to a bowl? Yeah, and right. Back and you dirty extra stuff. I'm going to add a little bit more oil just in case because I don't want my egg to stick. And if you have, you could use nonstick spray if you want or whatever. So I'm literally going to take the egg. I've made this little well and I've scooted all the veggies to the side. And if you guys aren't into eggs, you don't actually have to put eggs into it. I just feel like it's fried rice because you're going to say a little. It's an egg, right? And eggs are, I mean, eggs are. I don't want to speak because I'm not a nutritionist. I'm a fake nutritionist. I'm not uh -oh. my own nutritionist, but <laughs> from a real standard, like you want to, okay. like eggs are good, right? They provide good, like there's. Yeah, eggs can provide some really good uh, vitamins and minerals. And again, yeah. like with the, there's not a, a significant link between eggs and, and uh, cholesterol typically. So that's a thing too. I think eggs have gotten a bad rep for a really long time, but they're also a great protein source. So um, I eat eggs most days. I, uh, I have to say, Charlotte, you can't really see the top shot. Maybe you can where your thing is. It's a really cool shot of both eggs before they're cracked and broken. I know. I'm really just excited. Kind of frying up. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, making sure my heat's there. Now I'm just going to kind of scramble these guys just like this. Right? And I'm going to wait for those eggs to cook. Ooh, look at that. Look at this. Look at this. Now, if you, if you didn't want to make cauliflower fried rice, if you wanted to make real fried rice, all you would do is just use... Um, pre-cooked rice or rice that you've already cooked. Yeah, I like it. But resolution solution, this is a new right? year, new you. Mm -hmm. You know, why not try something Look new? Look at that, so it's starting to cook. So now all I'm gonna do is just mix this in like this. Just like this. Ta-da. I mean, you could also add like ginger to this. I've seen people add like it, we talked about it's pineapple. like you said, yeah, it's like, it's like, it's very customizable. It's very, it is, uh, it's it very is. approachable to like anything you'd want to throw in there. And then like it's it. absolutely done. This is it. You just set it aside and you could let it cool um, a little bit. You could add this to, um, you could add like shrimp to this dish. You could add um, like shredded chicken, ground turkey, whatever it is you were, whatever it is you like. Um, what I'm going to do at this particular point is I'm actually going to put this into yeah, show a- Show Hernan those. He wants to see them. Oh, look. The food storage containers, 
Oh my god, I think these are fantastic. Um, I bought a couple of boxes of these um, right when they came out, and they were so neat because they all fit together, like inside of each other, um, like like the nesting dolls. They're very fancy. And they're, now they're... I have a whole closet for them because I can never get them back in. But anyway, all right. So um, this one in particular is my favorite because this guy has. Look at this. What? Look. It has the little like what? the separators, divider? the dividers, right? <laughs> and so I made some That's ahead of time, cool. right? And I love this. So I particularly like this because these would be great for like portion control, right? What do you think, Kelly? Like, I think. Oh, absolutely. Can you, see that? you could put all kinds of things in there. You could do two separate things, maybe even have things with separate sauces. Right? That way they don't get for combined. sure. Yeah. I thought awesome. that was super clever, right? Yeah. You could put maybe you wanted to have like, I don't know, you had to heat things up at different times, whatever. I think these are fantastic. So as you guys are talking about, like we talk about meal prep and the, you know, the, the, the class being about like how to help yourself and how to like yeah. you know, do stuff in advance. I think that's really like, you, I heard you guys talking about that's kind of the enemy of like you're trying to take a new approach is, is the time, right? Like, so yeah. if, you, if you're realizing like everybody's busy and especially this, this last year, going into new year, craziness is continuing. So it's like, you're going, hey, I don't have time to go home and like, I don't wanna have to prep all this stuff. So like, if it's already pre-done, yeah. That's half the battle versus stopping for fast food just because it's easy and like Absolutely. I just need to get a meal on the table, which I totally get. I think it's removing barriers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my god, this smells so good. It smells really good. All right, like just do. I'll this. just sit over here and eat my hemp seeds. Yeah. Don't worry about me. Well, you made your choice. You're making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and so on this side, like again, I have you know what I have that I brought a rotisserie chicken. That's like my other like secret pleasure. It's a great cheat, it's a great cheat. It is the best cheat. And it's so inexpensive, just a rotisserie chicken, right? So basically if I was gonna, if I was gonna do the cauliflower rice, I would just line up my, my, my containers, my meal prep containers, and then I would just fill it up, right? That one um, recipe would probably fill um, four of these beautifully, right? So you would have, maybe you would do eat one tonight, right? For dinner with your grilled chicken or your shrimp, and then you would have three for the remainder of the week. So maybe they were other dinners or maybe they were lunches, right? And you talked mm -hmm. about the importance of labeling those. So if you do put them in your fridge, you can kind of do the FIFO. We call yes, food chef. service the FIFO, the first in, first out. Yes. So you label them and go, hey, I know I made this on Monday. It's the first one I'm gonna eat. I'll let the other ones sit as a week progresses. So Absolutely. Kind of so labeling is really important. So I take like regular masking tape, just like this. Um, you can use any kind of, you can get food labels if you want or just labels, um, but this works perfectly and a Sharpie marker, right? So for this one, I would just label it, um, let's see. This one is the fried rice, and I have some diced chicken, grilled diced chicken, so I would just put the label on there like this and label this one what it is. So fried rice with chicken, and then I would put the date, because how many times have you looked in the refrigerator and been like, I don't know how old that is. How old is that? And then you do the sniff test. Sniff test, yeah, That's never a good way to do food service, like sniff test. You do the that smells okay. <laughs> ah, it's not hairy. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do a quick cleanup. Um, Kelly, do you, meal, do you meal prep? I do, I absolutely love to meal prep. I, you do? Yeah, I, I, I can't get past you know cooking maybe like more than two times a week, so I usually will make something that has at least four servings and then just kind of eat on it. Um, yeah. It's just a lot more efficient and for me, I don't I love leftovers. I think some things taste better the next day. Some uh, Charlotte really Giovanna do. has a question for you. Yes. Love those containers. I do as well. Uh, how long does cauliflower rice stay good in the fridge? Giovanna that's a really good question. So we had this question earlier, like how long can you keep leftovers? So we're on a three to five days, right? So depending on what the food is, um, three to five days is the best um, the optimum range of yeah. leftovers, right? And you obviously want to make sure that you reheat foods to the proper temperature, so 165, right? You want to make sure that they are hot enough to kill any of the bacteria. That was One thing I would say, question. Giovanna, is if you're doing shrimp or any kind of seafood, I would say three days would be max. Yeah, I mean, you don't really want to like, I don't know how salmon's going to be on the fifth day, but definitely as long as you reheat that to... Cultured, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna get ready for our berry bowl. And a couple of tricks that I do when I have, um, when I'm making things with berries or fresh produce, uh, especially strawberries, I take my strawberries home and I immediately, and all my berries, I immediately wash everything, right? And then I cut up my berries 
like this. I just cut them up and I put them into a resealable container. Um, raise your hand if you have the berries in the back of the refrigerator that are um, hairy. I think everybody's raising their hand. I think that's a great practice, right? like you said. It's literally get it out of those clamshells and into the water, right? wash it and put it away so that way it'll last And then look, longer. you come home and it's like, oh, I want a snack, right? And then instead of going, oh, well, I'll eat these chips and the whatever or the candy, you're like, I have berries ready to go. So there they are. And then there's no excuse, right? And then I have little colanders I have in my pantry just to make all the berries so they don't get all funky. Rinse them off. Just a little cheat there. All right, so this recipe, I eat oats a lot. I eat oats for dinner. Does anybody else so, eat breakfast for dinner? You were talking about this, and I heard you and Kelly talking about the thing. What I'm most excited about for this recipe, Charlotte Learning, is will you also explain how to do the overnight oats? I know they're kind of a thing for people like to go, hey, because it's, it's talk about meal prepping. It fits into that spot of yes. like, make it the night before while you're doing your Netflix, and the next morning you come out, you grab your stuff, your and you're ready yeah. to go. So but overnight, it's like, what's the ratio and what are the best oats to use? Can you use so still like the best oats? That is a really good question. This is a Tompkins, a personal Tompkins question. So I'm going to answer this for you. Um, I do one to 1.5. So one, one part oat to 1.5. Tell me your trick. You had another trick. Oh, that. my trick, my the trick, trick for the oats. Okay. So, um, I heat up the liquid before I add it into um, whatever container I'm using, right? So the mason jar or whatever. And this recipe is actually great. If you want to do the overnight oats, what you would do is you would just heat up the liquid. You would put the berries in the bottom of the container, right? So like, let's say this is our container. You would put the fresh berries in the bottom, then you would top it with your raw uncooked oats. You would heat up whatever liquid you wanted it to be. So if it's, a, it's dairy milk, it's flax milk, soy milk, whatever you want that to be. And then um, you, don't, you don't need to scald it. It just needs to be, you know, hot. And then you pour that liquid on top of the oats, seal it up, and put it in the refrigerator, right? And what happens is that heat jump starts that cooking process. And so your oats will, will absorb some of that, so that was more a great, of that liquid, yeah, that, and you get a softer, more palatable. That was a great takeaway, because I, I, you know, yeah. I think most people just pour, you just pour the liquid on top, like cold mm -hmm. milk or cold whatever on top of it, and let it sit, which, I guess could work, right? But you're saying like you're you're jump starting the process because yes. you've got a, a warmer or hotter liquid that's going on there. Yeah, so, so it's sort of speeding that. up that process. That's a good tip. Thanks it is that. a good. You're welcome. Okay, so I am using um, for this recipe. We're going to do some rolled oats. We're using strawberries, blackberries, um, blueberries, a little cinnamon, a little bit of butter, and then we're using Mutopia. So, um, are you guys familiar with our Muto Mutopia milk? big fan of this oh, product. Absolutely. I'm using the vanilla. So Kelly, tell us a little bit about what makes Mutopia milk special. Absolutely. So the Mutopia milk actually goes through an ultra, ultra filtration process um, that results in a, a few different things. For, for starters, it actually has 50% less sugar than your regular milk. Um, it also has 50% more calcium and protein than your regular milk. So it, it, you know, you're filtering out some of the sugar, adding some really good stuff in there, um, or retaining some of that good stuff. And then for me, the mouthfeel with the Mutopia is just amazing. It, yeah. The vanilla really tastes like melted ice cream, in my opinion. Okay. Um, I love it. Is it, is it lactose-free Mutopia, or is it not? Does it have lactose in it, Mutopia? I believe that when you do the ultrafiltration, it actually filters It's out actually lactose-free. Okay. Yeah. So oh, yeah. the Mutopia milk, can so you see? What is really right cool there. about our Mutopia, and basically any milk you buy at HEB, um, we have our very own dairy plant where we make mm -hmm all of these milks in a science fiction style fashion in a It's like, not science lab fiction, of, it's just science. It's a lab of wonder <laughs> is what it is. It is and the stuff they do is amazing. Like literally it's raw milk and yes. raw organic milk and then they make absolute magic like our yogurt, all that it's so cool. So that's a really cool uh, it's a really cool information. I don't drink a lot of Mutopia so that was really good information for me. You know I'm not a real big like milk that's a lie. I eat a lot of cereal at home. <laughs> Full disclosure everyone. Um, I really like this, this particular like product, Mutopia. It adds a lot of like, it flavors. It flavors the oatmeal without adding like additional sugars, like Kelly said, but also like it cuts down on ingredients. So it's, the, it's vanilla, so I don't have to buy that ingredient or store that ingredient or think about that ingredient. Um, and also it's really good in like smoothies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really good in smoothies. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my um, milk to a simmer. 
So you're not, like you said, you're not really going for scalding. You're just kind of going for, you know. For, well, that's for the overnight oats. Now, for, you can even microwave your milk if you're going to do overnight oats. For this particular recipe, you actually want to bring your, your, like, milk up to a simmer. Got it. And while that's happening, can you watch my milk, Tompkins? Don't. Yeah, I'll do it from way over here. I'll watch it. And I'll let you know the moment it boils over. <laughs> While that's happening, I'm actually going to put our <laughs> rice into some um, containers because I feel like we should meal prep it. Right, guys? Y'all want to see this? Meal prep it. Meal prepping. Right. I don't think there's a person that's watching today that has not left milk on the stove and then walked away for a second and come back to a, to uh, to a lava over, explosion of, of frothy milk right? all over your, which is so much fun to clean up. Yes. Look at this. This smells so good. I'm really bummed that I missed the whole um, low sodium soy sauce. Uh, conversation. Conversation. <laughs> it was sizzling and I couldn't hear it. I'll tell and you, you were it like, was good information. It was good information. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to go back to heb.com slash classes and rewatch it. So That's right, you just go to our YouTube right. channel actually, yeah. Charlotte, and you can rewatch all this great content. You can listen to everything over again. And also, if you wanted to cook side by side with Charlotte while she does all the recipes, you would simply go there and watch, and you can cook along with it. Then you can pause live. It's like live. I would be in your house. Exactly. It's a cool feature. And you can watch any of those. If you want to go back, right? just like the ones we did last year with the uh, charcuterie, if you're throwing a party and you're like, what was that thing again? You can just go to the YouTube channel. All the content is there. They do a great Love job this. with all that. Are you watching my milk? How is it? Uh, from a seated position, it looks OK. Ooh, really it's don't starting to bubble. Is it? Yep. OK, so I am now going to add in my one cup of oats. So I've got a cup and a half, cup and three quarter. So can I ask you a question, Chef? Yes, Chef. Uh, old fashioned, rolled, uh, instant, or steel cut? In my hand or my preference? What's your preference for all those and what's in your hand? I like rolled oats. Plain old rolled oats. This is old fashioned rolled oats. I don't particularly care for the instant. Um, I'm an old fashioned rolled oats kind of gal. What about you? Oh, really? Fascinating, Tom Kids. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading a question. <laughs> How about you, Kelly? What's your favorite? Oh, I like rolled oats too. Instant, if I like uh, But steel cut for me is a little. Oh, so, well, this is live. I do. I'm a t so, I'm reading a question that says on Mutopia milk, because it is ultra filtered, then it doesn't need pasteurizing? Question mark. That would be great. Um, I don't know that question. Maybe, Kelly, you could answer that. I'm not sure. Yeah, so when we talk about ultra, ultra filtration, I cannot talk apparently. Um, that is actually part of the pasteurization process. So that is that they're basically a similar thing. The ultra filtration is just a an extension of the pasteurization, if that makes sense. It's like almost like they took the pasteurization that goes even further at that. Like it. So it's like ultra pasteurized. I love it. The um, okay, Charlotte, to answer your question, I make a lot of homemade granola and my favorite is the old fashioned. I don't like instant oats, but um, nothing against them personally. I just like Old fashioned. You've had my granola. Okay. You've had it. That's the old fashioned. It's the best it's old granola I've ever granola. had. It's really good. Okay, so to this, I'm actually, while this is cooking, I'm going to add in some, about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of um, ground flax seeds. Um, I like ground flax seeds. I like the flavor. Um, they add some fiber. Kelly, can you tell us? So, like, what is that, like, overall nutritional value? And, like, what do they, what, tell us what flax seeds are good for and why I would want them. Yeah, absolutely. So, beyond the fiber that you mentioned, Charlotte, um, they also are a really good source of magnesium. And then also, more interestingly even, they're a really good source of omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids, which can be a, a little bit of a challenge for some of us to get. Yeah. Um, flax actually happens to be one of four vegan options if you're looking for a, an omega-3 containing food. Um, most of the time with omega-3s, you're looking at things like fish, seafood, fortified products like eggs and milk. So yeah. if you're a vegan, obviously that's really challenging. Um, and it's really, it's so versatile. It just works in a lot of things, tastes delicious. Um, and really, really good for you. And it's hard, like you talk about, and you would know this, Kelly. The uh, when when it's when somebody's or somebody's transitioning, say this year, somebody's going to go, hey, I'm going to concentrate on being a. I was a huge red meat eater. I want to transition to a completely vegan diet. There's a lot of like things that are hard for those people to kind of adjust to, which is a lot of times like is getting the amino acids and some of those things. And there's certain vegetables, grains, like those kind of things, like the flaxseed that do that. What are some other great like like amino acid style? Like, because there's not a lot. 
or is there a lot? I don't even know. So I'm speaking to like protein sources for vegans. Or? Yeah, like some of those things that have like the higher amounts of amino acids. Like, what would be those great protein things for them to kind of lean on? Yeah. So if you're looking at, uh, at you know vegan or vegetarian, you know a lot of your sources are going to be things obviously all plant based stuff like beans, legumes, um, also tofu or soy um, can be really great sources as well. Um, I feel like those are going to be your biggest single focus typically, but you know, there's a lot of a lot of foods have a little bit amount, a little bit of protein. So sometimes with when you're vegetarian or vegan, you see people tend to eat a little bit more to you know be full and that sort of thing. So you can get it from other areas too, but those are the main sources. By the way, uh, what you're cooking up there smells like marshmallow treats. It smells it's like okay. Smells this is another yogurt. reason why I love this recipe. So it's like the like creaminess and like decadence of this vanilla. I can smell Mutopia. it from here. So good. And then I'm going to take it one step further. So the warm berry part is actually like the berries are actually like we're going to cook them in a small amount. So just so we know, oats, I've covered, they're at a low simmer. We're going to let that, those They're guys go. The milk. It smells like, it smells like toasted marshmallows. Like it's that, amazing. That's what it smells like it's there. amazing. She said it tasted like melted vanilla ice cream. I mean, it's it's delicious. So like it gives you that decadent flavor and that decadent feel without being you know, I feel bad. I've never tried. Expensive. I've never bought the vanilla okay. milk. Okay, you've no got to try it. You're missing out. <laughs> so, I, I've got another pan right here, and I've added um, in about two tablespoons of butter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently cook these berries, right? Just enough till they release some of that their delicious sweet berry juices, and then we're going to put that directly on top of this oatmeal. So good. It's so good. It's like dessert. It's almost like pie. Ah, oh, it's so good. So you can eat it. So you're saying you can eat it now, but then also, like, if you were going to turn this into your, because it's it's really done. So like, once everything is finished cooking and it's all warm, you could just cool it off, and then tomorrow you don't even have to make, you don't have to worry about overnight oats. You can just scoop it up and take it with you. I'm eating one tonight for dinner, and then I've got breakfast for the week. Well, hopefully you have enough for all of us to try that same thing. Well, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, so I've melted my butter, and it's not a ton of butter. It's just a little bit of butter, and we talked about this, right? So there's a time and a place for saturated fi fats, right, Kelly? Kelly's not going to slap your hand right now, Charlotte. She's right. Not we're not the food police. <laughs> Dietitians are not there to slap food out of your hand. We're here to help you find some choices that might be a little better for you that you enjoy. We, we, don't, we don't want anybody to feel deprived or, you know. I, Deborah, that doesn't feel like fun. too. All right, so I'm going to add in some of our, um, the blackberries, the blueberries. The strawberries right now that I'm buying at HEB are phenomenal. They are really good. Uh, I, I agree with you. It, it, it's not strawberry season, is it? No, there, uh, but there's, uh, there's some great, thanks to globalization, there's such great strawberries we get from all over the world. <laughs> I'm also going to add a little bit of cinnamon to this. Um, I love it. I like that cinnamon sort of has the, like, the essence of like sweetness, right? So like when you close your eyes and you think of, you know, apple pie, right? You kind of get those visions of, or those, it's reminiscent of cinnamon, right? Anyway, cinnamon it's has like a warm it. spice. It's one of warm those great spice. chef yes, spices. Yes, that's what that I was really looking for, chef. That's exactly food. what I was looking for. And I'm um, here to help. That's what I just did for you lately. Oh, thanks, man. I got a whole <laughs> bowl of oats for you. Um, any, oh, man, y'all. Okay. You weren't watching. You like, watch did it start to boil over? I, I, I'm sorry. I'm I kidding. Can't, I'm uh, kidding. I'm kidding. You know what's being blocked? It's that kitchen and table, that awesome kitchen and table blocks that Herner and I were looking at that he thought was a cookbook. It's blocking my view of the stove right now. All right. That's doing pretty good. I can also, see I angles. scalded the milk just a tiny bit. But, but scalded milk is also where you get some of those great flavors of ice some cream. Flabber. Some flabber. All right. We're going to let this keep going. Bring that to a bowl. Just a minute. Can you see? So you can see in our berries, they're just sort of letting go. You get kind of a gentle, like a little mm -hmm. gentle thing going there with those. And if you're not into like cooked fruit, like cooked berries or whatever, it's fine. You could totally just put fresh. Well, if my deal. Kelly, if my friend Kelly has taught me anything, I said my Kelly because I just took ownership <laughs> of you as my dietitian. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'll share you with everybody that needs you. Uh, she uh, said that, hey, any fruit, whether it's cooked or raw, is still good fruit. So whether you want to eat it raw or cooked, it's just, it's just as good as long as you're eating said fruit. Now, what about, so I asked this question earlier, and I felt like, obviously, food uh, over the last 50 years has expanded and changed a lot. And I know the FDA regulations that you guys do, like, there's, like, that whole, like, where can people go to find, number one, good information on what they can be eating, but also, like, 
the guidelines for food and what you should be eating have changed, right? Like the amounts of stuff they've done have kind of changed. Can you like speak to a little bit of that at all? Like yeah, as far absolutely. As, like, what? So obviously, you know, if you want to understand uh, more about food, obviously you can come see one of our HEB registered dietitians. But um, it, you know, in the last 50 years, there was a big focus on grains as the basis. You know, when you looked at that old pyramid, you know, you would see the bottom is just all grains. And now we have a new uh, my plate model. So the my plate model is focused on making your plate half fruits and vegetables. Um, you know, with and, and then making everything balanced. So having your protein and your your dairy. Um, if you want to learn more about that, you can go to myplate.gov. There you go, myplate.gov. Yeah. I'm gonna add a little tiny bit of salt to my oats. Oh, why would you add salt to that sweet thing, Charlotte? Just to add balance and contrast. <laughs> Tompkins. Also because I won't eat it if it doesn't have salt. In that's it, so. also true, and I um, I cook every day for your. Um, Kelly, when I come see you, don't judge me on the amount of salt I tell you I eat. No, there's no judgment or shame with uh, with our dietitians. Okay, so I have to like I have a I have a question for everyone. Do people like really sort of loose oats, or do they like really firm, hard like I call them cafeteria oats? Yeah. So what is <laughs> like you know when it's like Mah, and they slap on the oats like or like I could pick it up and use it as like spackle on my wall, yes. like kind of like that kind of like yes. thing. Yes. Right, I get it. I like them to be more like. You know. Brian said they should stick to your ribs. <laughs> so he's more for the... <laughs> so when you eat it, Brian, it like your stomach can't digest it. So it's like just okay. stuck on the wall and like just keeps trying to like... <laughs> I'm, like I said, I'm more of a like a porridgey type. I think that's what Brian's at. I think that's where his like should stick to your ribs. I think that's, a, okay. that's where he's at, like more of the porridge. Okay. Ooh, look at that. Can y'all see it over there in TV land? Yes. All right. So now we're going to move this stuff over to the cutting board and we're going to build a bowl. It's like build a bear, only with a bowl. No? Mm. Okay. Bad joke. Sorry. Sorry. All right. Build. I've never actually built a bear, but I'm about to build a bowl. I need a bowl. Okay. I got one right here. Right, I'm going to put that guy there. All right. So typically a serving would be like a cup of oats, right, Kelly? Right. Usually okay. half a cup. Half a cup? Half a cup cooked. Oh, no, raw. So yeah, it's gonna be more like a cup. A whole cup cooked, right? Okay, so here we go, guys. Watch, I'm gonna portion control this. Same thing with the ice cream, right? We're talk, we all talk, we all agreed the gallon was one portion. That's one serving. Just wanna make sure it's new. Uh, new. I like so, your justification. All right, so maybe my bowl's a little big, but hey, wishful eating. Just throw my so I like. In so I, I like the way those oats look that's like i like more right. of the porgy like and uh, then gumma. they're just a little bit liquidy and you can always add more or less liquid depending on how you like the oats right but when you reheat these guys they're not going to be like stuck together like glue yeah that's I got kinda, you. i'm gonna add i can also read your mind a cup and a quarter because i like oats then i'm gonna take my guys these beautiful berries i think these are absolutely beautiful I love this. Look at this. Can y'all see this color yet? Can you well, see what it? I like, because I can see from here that I don't know if our folks at, at, at home can see, like, that you're, you literally so excited very about gently this. saute them. So they still have a lot of, like, can the structure. They're not, like, It's jammed. so pretty. So pretty. And it smells so, this is like dessert. This is dessert. And it smells wonderful. Also, you could use these, like, this wonderful, like, sauteed fruit to put on top of, like, cottage cheese or yogurt or something like that. Um, now, I'm going to add to the top of this a little tiny bit more of flax, just for fun, but I'm also going to add some hemp seeds. And um, I like them because of the texture, and I know that they've got some good healthy things in them for me. Um, but Kelly, tell me what those things are, because I don't... Yeah, absolutely. So hemp seeds are actually going to be high in iron, magnesium, and zinc. So uh, obviously, you know, um, magnesium is important for your bone, your muscle health. It keeps you regular too, which is helpful. Is so and then zinc, I wanted to talk a minute about because it actually helps support immune function, which is obviously a really big thing right now. It's kind of a so thing right now. Super it's important. kind, it's of, a kind of a thing right now. So it's a really good source of that as well. Oh my um, God, this would be like the, uh-oh. Mm. And for, uh, for those, I have a family member who thought when they purchased hemp at the store uh, that it had THC in it which is actually not, uh, not true. And I tried to tell them <laughs> not that. Not true. Because uh, we couldn't sell that at HEB. Okay. So uh, they're, they're delicious. And honestly, when mess. you toast them yeah. in a dry pan, they pop and they have a really nutty flavor and they're they delicious do. on salads. I use them as um, uh, on top of salads, just like you just said. And oh I, uh, I also just ate about a half a cup raw. You totally did. We all and saw that. And I feel that. very satiated. So you guys are right. 
And then look at this cute, this is a great little snack, right? Wouldn't you think this is a great midday snack? I'm into this. Y'all, I'm into this. Can I stop and just eat this? It smells so good. All right, what time is it? How much time we have, homie? You have about a little less than 10 minutes. Ooh. Just shy of 10 minutes. Perfect, shy. because that's just enough time for us to do the butternut the squash. squash. No, spaghetti squash. I've been saying it all day. Spaghetti squash. I, I led you on so that bad. path. I started to say you that. You did. So. It's okay. It's all right. Quick cleanup, really quickly. I'm going to check our squash. Woo -wee. Oh, wow. I just weed on camera. That's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, look at this. This is fantastic. Okay. I'm gonna put this here so y'all can see it. Oh yeah, I can see it from here. Oh, I can beautiful. smell the caramelization. It's so pretty. Look at that. Oh, and the rosemary. Thank you for telling me to put one in ahead of time. You were right. No, it'll just cost you those strawberries. I'll hold on to those for you. It's so good. Look, kitchen and table. I'm okay. telling you, kitchen and table is killing it. Really stuff. upped their game. All on their stuff. bowls, all okay. those pots and pans. I'm going to let on those the, on the stove. sit Amazing. right there. Okay, so I, we're going to cook the the diced chicken with the tomatoes. That's going to go with this rosemary roasted spaghetti squash. Quick cleanup. All I'm going to save all these berries for you. Save them. Okay. Um, and you'll, you look at this stove, you see those pans. So everything there is kitchen table. All of this I love the table. titanium one is the one that looks like copper. The titanium nonstick pans, those are amazing. It is amazing. They're really, really good. So this recipe is really easy. So the squash goes in ahead of time. While the squash is in, we've made the cauliflower rice. Cauliflower rice. We've made the... Um, the bowl. The bowl. So we made two things. And now we're going to finish this off. And let me get my vermouth. So why? So okay, talk okay about, so we first talk about let me walk you through the recipe and then we'll get into the vermouth. So nonstick skillet. Everything I do is nonstick skillets. I love them. They're my favorite. Um, and I'm going to do a little bit of olive oil into the pan. And we talked about this. I saute in olive oil. I use olive oil for everything. Um, medium high heat. And to this, I'm going to add in about a pound of chicken. And I've diced this up already just for the ease of like cooking demo. But like you said, if you want to make this faster, rotisserie chicken. Ro absolutely, cheap. rotisserie chicken, um, ground turkey, anything like that, right? Okay, so we're just gonna throw these guys in there. You don't want to add too much to the pan because you don't want to crowd it. And you want to make sure that, because otherwise you sort of steam it and then it, you know, everything gets kind of gray. I'm going to chop this garlic really quickly. Um, you can buy garlic that's already peeled, which is such a time saver. I'm actually, this is so hot. That's my personal favorite kitchen hack, chopped garlic. And we also sell, in a lot of stores, chopped garlic now too, already ready to go. Y'all, remind me that that's hot. All right, so I'm just going to slice it. I like to slice garlic. We just take off that stem end, and then we just doop, slice ever so. Y'all want me to move over a little bit on this cutting board so you can see? Ever so gently slicing. I actually, I agree with you. I like slicing garlic because it gives presentation to the food. And I like, uh, you know, when it's nicely cooked, obviously not raw. Nobody wants a nice raw piece of garlic in there. It doesn't burn as fast. Sometimes, like, if your pan's too hot, um, you'll have, like, diced garlic, chopped garlic, um, and it, it burns really quickly. All right, I'm going to take my salt and my pepper back over here, too. You like a lot of garlic, don't you, Tompkins? Uh, I've been known Kelly, to put down the garlic for I sure. Love garlic. Right. I I'm like a sometimes garlic. Like the, uh, <laughs> sometimes. I'll take garlic. you back to a story when Charlotte and I were shopping for an event, and uh, she was pregnant. I'm gonna. You were about this. to have your baby, mm. and I had bought the already peeled cloves of garlic, heading back to the store, and I thought. That if she had a knife in the car, she probably would have stabbed me because the I raw mean, garlic was maybe overwhelming. Maybe that's dramatic, but <laughs> all right. So we're gonna generously season with salt and pepper. All right. So as you're seasoning, will you take me through? I, I'm on board with the vermouth, but tell everybody at home why they should be using vermouth uh, over white wine, or can they substitute one for the other? Absolutely, they can be substituted, and I'm glad you asked that. Um, 
Two things. First, I like the flavor of vermouth. It has a very like herbaceous undertone or un like note to it, which I really like, especially as it reduces. And I'm all about layering flavor. Um, but also like two more things. One, <laughs> you don't have to sacrifice any wine for your pan, so it could you know it's not like one for the pan, one for me. It's all for me. Um, or if you're not a big drinker, you don't have to. Um, buy a bottle of wine and potentially waste it, right? Yep. And it's fairly cheap. Dry vermouth is fairly inexpensive. Yes. I actually like in the summertime a little bit of like a quality vermouth with some Topo Chico. Really? really nice. Are those the Charlotte uh, summer secret hacks? The what? The summer secret hacks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's like what you do on Sundays when you can't buy wine until... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, okay, sauteing. We want to brown the chicken. Ooh, man, it smells so good. It does smell very good. It smells wonderful. I'm at a very, I would say an extremely safe distance of about 20 feet away from you, and I just can really smell Right, and so, Mike, the, the heat's relatively high. We're at, like, on the higher side of medium high, and my garlic hasn't burned yet because we sliced it instead of... Those, the it. stove we're using does put out about 55 to 75,000 BTUs, so it cooks a little faster than your normal stove. All right, so now... The chicken's brown, so I'm gonna brown it a little bit more. While that's browning, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna show you guys how to remove this beautiful squash from the pan. So for those that have never cooked spaghetti squash, why do they actually call it spaghetti squash? Because when you, it looks like spaghetti, like the fibers of it look like spaghetti. It's so cute. All right, this is really hot, I mean tongs. I'm not going to do, okay. <laughs> Here we go. Did you go down to the basement for that? I did. I went down to the basement. All right. Da, 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 da. I ran out of tools, y'all. I ran out of tools. What are you looking for? A spoon? Big spoon. Big spoon. There you go. Now, some people will shred it up. Like, they'll take a fork and they'll, like, shred it. But I like to keep it intact. This is going to be so good. Look at this. And I just spoon it out. Skitty squash is delicious. It really is good. And um, ooh, I get really Angel excited Hair when pasta? things like when a plan comes together. Look this at looks this. like angel hair pasta. Ah, oh, it's so good. And you essentially get four servings, you know, per squash, right? I'm gonna come back and check my chicken. So I, I've enjoyed um, all the different hacks that you're kind of showing, like some things that we need to advance. Meal prep obviously sets you up for success. Um, for those that are just joining us, like it's a really cool thing to do. And like you said, you're dicing the chicken and cooking it fresh, chicken breast. But the other hack is use a rotisserie chicken. You said you do it all the time. Like it's an easy way to go, hey, I, I need something quick. I don't want to have to go and cook chicken. Yeah. You grab it and go. Who's been practicing on their, uh, their flipping, sauteing skills, anybody? I have. Um, you so have. you can even take it a step further. Instead of buying like the whole rotisserie chicken, you can you can buy like rotisserie chicken that's already been shredded. So it's like, how much time do you want to save? Like, if HB you want it, we you have all it. the time. Do y'all have that in your meal planning tool? The yeah, so there's, there's all kinds of, of options depending on what. All right, so we've got our cherry tomatoes in there, and we just want to get them till their skin starts to wrinkle, right? And then, look. Magic. All right, now we're gonna add in a little bit of our vermouth, and I'm gonna say about a quarter cup to half. If you don't wanna use any booze at all, go ahead and use uh, chicken stock or vegetable stock. And a quick tip, if you, are, if you do have a gas uh, stove that range, you wanna happen. definitely uh, pull right. it we're, away from the heat. We're burning off our... Alcohol is burning off. All the, all the alcohol off. Ooh. All nice. right, now I'm gonna add in the spinach. I actually made this recipe the other day. We do about four cups of spinach, right? And we just wanna wilt this spinach. Which turns in about a tablespoon. <laughs> yeah. It's like um, three, three leaves. Shrinking. All right, throw mm -hmm. that in there and the cherry tomatoes mixed with that vermouth make this like sauce. It's oh, like it's a clean tomato sauce, like a very, very light, so clean. So good, so good. 
I like adding the spinach at the last second. Just yep. to kind of like and gently wilt. You know, in true Charlotte fashion. What are you looking for? What do you need? A lid. Cheese, a lid. A lid. Um, how about I'm I good. give you this? Can I give you this? You have the pot here? And I'm gonna cross I'm gonna cross camera. Oh my gosh, y'all. This is the okay. best kitchen hack. I'm breaking the are fourth wall. Yes. No. Oh. oh what? You had to use the big one. We were so close. I was so close. How, can I give you a big plastic tray? Nah, we're going to make this work. <laughs> we got this. I'm just going to toss it. It's going to be messy, but y'all bear with I me. I tried. I really, you know, I was really thinking that I could come in there and really And that's save all we could ask for. It's all right. Yes. Okay. Salt and pepper. This is really good. I like the, uh, I like the smell. I like the whole combo. This oh, it's is some really be good so stuff. pretty. Between the fried rice. And again, this is obviously also customizable. All it I want to do, I want to add artichokes to that right now. That sounds like what you would do. Look at that. Beautiful. And look, the cherry tomatoes just pop and burst these little flavor bombs. <laughs> Love it. Y'all, I get really excited about this stuff. That's what they are, right? They are, aren't they? What, what, the, what are those called again? Those are our which tomatoes? These are the. Cher are they the cherry bomb or the sweet bombs? Please Sweet hold. Bombs. Stop it. Flavor bombs. Flavor bombs. Yep, right there, I knew it. flavor bombs. Okay, and this is it. And it, all we're gonna do is take this chicken, do that sauce, and we're gonna put this. Doo -doo, on the top. Add a little bit of that sauce in there. And you could top yeah. this with a little Parmesan cheese or an aged balsamic vinegar. Mm. So. Fantastic. So good. This is all really cool, and I'm really excited for all the information that Kelly, you gave us, and Charlotte, like all the great stuff and like all the meal prepping, because it really is all about kind of trying to set people up for success and make it easier on them in the new year. You know, like if you're trying to have some good New Year's resolutions. I still don't know what my New Year's resolution is. So my New Year's resolution for today is going to be to eat most of that bowl that's up there. <laughs> new year, new you. That's, that's right. Great. Um, we're going to stick around for a few minutes with any questions. I'm going to build some of these. Oh, oh. What did we forget? Nothing. I just have some things that I put together. Yeah, some more, some more stuff. Just so you guys can see. see. There's you, so many containers in that box. You followed your own box. advice. You have all these, you've, you've Look, got all this prep stuff. I did it. I prepped it all. I did. I followed my own advice. Look at this. This one's the, ta-da. Awesome. Look at this. And what a great thing to just grab out of your fridge if you're yeah. running late for work or just don't have to worry about lunch. You just grab it and go. Yeah. If you, let's see, I don't have a fork up here. Do you have a fork over there? Use your fingers. I was going to show you how to scrape it with the fork. Oh, got it. Hmm. I have a giant fork. That'll be more fun. I feel like it'll soar. <laughs> oh, well. It'll I'm sork. just going to taste it. Does anybody <laughs> want to taste it? So literally, I would just top, you could top this with um, aged balsamic or some Parmesan cheese. So that's, um, that's it, guys. I'm so glad that you all joined me. Um, Kelly. Thank you for joining me. You had so much information and you were such, like, so insightful about all of this. And I'm really glad that you were here. Scott Tompkins, as always, the best moderator. Um, we'll stick Pleasure around for a few minutes. Mine. Any questions? Anything? Um, if um, Go to HTV.com for next week's classes. Or if you, like I said, if you want to watch um, any of the classes you may have missed, they are definitely there. Um, Happy New Year, everybody.